Hi everyone, my name is Danielle, and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This week we're going to focus on Merchants of the Dark Road, which is by Elk Creek Games. And I haven't had a chance to get my hand on this, but I just love the components so much in the game that we're just going to wing it for a picture. So in the game, first off there's deluxe components that are really cool, but in the game you're working as a merchant and you had to travel the dark road. Wow, I guess this is named correctly. <laughs> so there's lights out, so you're collecting lanterns that you do things and you're gathering goods so you could trade and sometimes you deliver people and you're all moving in a circle around the board. It's a little hard to learn all the rules at first because there's a lot going on, but it all made sense. So once you started playing, it was just easy to get into the flow and a lot of fun. So the deluxe edition has cute little lanterns that are like this big, which would be a little hard to make. So we're gonna make them like this big so that we can make it uh, actual size you want to eat slash actually be able to put a candle inside because why wouldn't we so instead of plastic our lantern is going to be made out of peanut butter cookies glued together with fluff and covered in chocolate and then we're going to experiment and use isomalt which i've seen on all different shows and you know what we're going to give it a try and hopefully it works out let's get started this bake is a fun combination of really simple and kind of difficult let's start with the easy stuff in a small bowl, combine three cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Give it a quick whisk. Now in our mixing bowl, cream one and a half sticks of softened unsalted butter, a half a cup cream peanut butter, and one cup sugar until nice and smooth. You want to be kind of like a nice pale brown color. Add in one egg and one half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Give it a quick mix. Slowly add your dry ingredients to your wet ingredients. When everything has been added and it has come together, you can dump it on your counter and knead in to incorporate the last of the straight clumps without working it too much. Divide your dough in half and form into discs. You're then gonna wrap them in plastic wrap and place them in the fridge for at least one hour. So that's why they're a lot easier to roll out when you need to cut out your cookies. Roll out your cookie dough until it's a quarter of an inch thick. Use cookie cutters to cut out circles that are about one inch and half inch larger than your mold. The one I'm using here is actually a resin mold, so you'd use it to make candles and such, but I figured it'd work for sugar too, and it was mostly true. Also cut out pieces that are one inch wide total and a half to three quarters inch wide, and these are gonna be the knob that goes on top. So as you can see, there's way, way, way more dough than the cookies you actually need for making one. If you have a lot of isomalt and you wanna make more than one, then you're all set, or if not, you could just eat the extra cookies or freeze them or make half the recipe. With these cookies, we're gonna bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for seven to nine minutes for the bigger cookies and about six to seven minutes for the smaller cookies. Let them cool completely before decorating. Now that our cookies are cool, it's time to assemble our base and tops. Find the pieces you want to stick together and apply a thin layer of fluff in between the cookies. This cookie is actually inspired by thinking that peanut butter s'more would be pretty tasty. Now melt semi-sweet chocolate chips in the microwave at 30 second intervals. When it looks like it's almost done, give it a chance to melt on its own before you put in that microwave because you could potentially overheat it and there should be enough heat in the bowl to help melt the last pieces. If it's too thick, then you can use Easy Thin or some other method to try and loosen it up so it's always able to flow more. I'll put a link below to what I use. Um, there's also helpful when you make cake pops. Okay, our top and bottom are ready. Time for the difficult part. Hey, thanks for watching. While you're here, hit subscribe for new videos every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. Thanks. As I mentioned before, I used a resin mold to make our central pillar. I'm sure there's other ways and they'd be easier. So if you're aware of them, let me know in the comments, but this is at least what came to mind when I decided to try it. So you wanna apply a thin coat of cooking spray to your cylinder mold? I emphasize thin because if you try to spray that spray it directly in there which i learned the isomalt will not stick at all and you just get a puddle on the bottom i love watching baking shows shocking i know they talk a lot about isomalt for sugar art as it's more stable and less finicky alternative to sugar so i decided to give it a try to process your isomalt start microwaving the microwave for about 30 second increments until it's starting to get more melted and bubbly and then you could always switch over to Less time if you feel like it just needs a little bit more. The picture of the lanterns has a yellow color, so you could add a drop of yellow food coloring at this point to make it yellow, even when it's not lit up, because you know we have to lay it up. Pour it into your mold while gently turning it to coat all the sides. Make sure it gets to the bottom and fully coats that too. 
Once the bottom is coated, flip the container over and let it drip down the sides and try and cover up any spots you missed on your downward motion. You're going to let that cool there for a little bit to harden and you can even put it in the fridge or the freezer to make sure that's fully hardened before you try to get it out of there. Making this lay was tedious and took a while, lots of tries, but the only good thing is that if you mess up, you could just put it back in the microwave and try again and again and again and keep trying until you get it right. Once you have your central pillar, you want to heat up some more chocolate or use some of the extra chocolate from before and draw your lines on it to match the little lantern picture. Make sure your chocolate isn't too runny so this will actually stick to the lantern and not just goop down the side. Final touches are to use the chocolate as a glue to put the bottom in place and you can put a little border around the bottom of the isomont pillar. Make sure you don't glue on the top because then you won't be able to lift it up and put inside your tea light. And now you have a glowing lantern. Yay! Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. I hope you enjoyed seeing our lantern come together and glow. I know, I found it pretty cool. I wouldn't really recommend eating the pillar of ice and malt. You could technically eat it, but I don't know if it'd be enjoyable. But those peanut butter cookies that are extra, definitely eat those. And if you want to, you could just cover all of them with fluff and chocolate. Mm. Or just eat the peanut butter cookie plain. I don't think you could go wrong, because they're delicious. So, the past few videos have featured some sort of light element, which has been fun. Is there any other game you think would benefit from light in the bake? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, hit like for, well, to help me out. Thanks for watching. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye!